In today's video, we're going to go through how you can use your NAS to expand the local storage on your computer and provide additional drive space to your system without buying any hard drives. If you want to find out more about how to do this, then stick around for the rest of this video. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. And of course, if you find this useful, give it a like as it helps support the channel. Though the term iSCSI may sound a bit strange and complicated, the process of using it is very easy and the result will make perfect sense once you see it. Before we begin, let's quickly define what iSCSI is and why it's different than using a map drive on your NAS. If you're like most NAS owners, including me, you have multiple shares that are used by one or more people in the household. The advantage of a network share is that multiple people can access it at the same time. You can add permissions, and you can usually access most, if not all, of the available storage. In addition, it's pretty easy to set up and easy to make modifications. There are, however, two major drawbacks. The first being speed, especially on small files. And the second is that applications that you, want, that you might want to install on your computer typically only install to a local storage device, or at a minimum work better when they're installed on a local storage. This is where iSCSI comes in. iSCSI stands for Internet Small Computer System Interface, which sounds really complicated, and works completely different than a NAS share. It's the opposite of a NAS share, and it looks to the system as a local drive rather than a map drive, allowing you to do things like install apps. And it'll be usable just as if it was a local hard drive. And for the most part, it'll be dedicated to that system. Since it does block level disk writes, smaller files can truly benefit from the speed of direct writes. Though you may have never heard of it, iSCSI has been around for many, many years and was ratified back in 2005. Currently, it's supported by almost everything, including QNAP, Synology, Windows Server, Linux, and Windows. So that this makes a bit more sense, let's walk through a simple setup using my QNAP and a Windows client and answer the question, why do I even need to do this? First, let's go ahead and launch the iSCSI application. And you're going to be prompted that the services are not running and asked if you want to start them. So go ahead and say yes to that. Next, you'll be asked to launch the quick configuration wizard, and I suggest doing that for the first time. So go ahead and click OK. After that, you'll be looking at the introduction page. So go ahead and hit next. In the next screen, you're going to be asked to create a name and an alias. They can be the same, and it's really up to you how you want to name them. You can leave the default allowing the cluster to access. But in the configuration that we're going to show, it's not going to make any difference. It's not going to be used. Later, however, you may want to have a second system access to storage, so leaving it checked just makes sense. We'll leave everything under the Advanced as the default and select Next. And once you're done, you'll be prompted with the summary of the target. Next, select Apply. And on this screen, you have to select the storage pool that you want to use and keep the default section of the thick storage. In my example, I'm going to use Storage Pool 2, which is an array of SSDs that I have but it will work the same on hard drives, so whatever you're going to plan on using. You kind of have to note the free storage space, though, on the pool. So if you don't have enough, you'll have to resize the, the thick volumes in order to provide space for this. Later in this video, I'll show you how to resize your current partition to provide more space. Click Next on this screen where you're going to allocate storage and create this new chunk of storage. Type the size that you want, being mindful to the space that you have on the pool. And know that in the future, you can make this larger at any time, but you can't make it smaller. So I would start small and increase it as you need it. Click Next for the summary, and then click Finish. The next screen will show you the drive getting ready. And when you go back to the Storage tab, I can now see that I have a new block-based thick storage LUN. Depending on your settings, you may get a warning that you've exceeded the threshold, so you may have to adjust your setting or disable the warnings. I'll cover it at the end of this video how to change that and how to make adjustments to these settings. When everything is done, your iSCSI will look something like this, showing the name and the capacity and the status. That's it for the NAS, so now we have to jump over to our Windows or Mac system. I'm going to go ahead and use a Windows client, but you can do the same thing on a Mac. We now have to get our client system to attach to the target so that we can add it as a local drive to our machine. To do this, click on the Windows button and start typing iSCSI Initiator. The app should come up and go ahead and click on it 
And again, you'll be notified that the service isn't running and asked if you want to start it and have it start every time the computer starts. So go ahead and say yes. And then you'll be taken to the property screen. There's a lot of information on this screen and many of these options will not be used for us right now. For what we're doing, we only need a couple of things. Next to the target, all we really need is the IP address of your NAS. If you're not sure what that is, you may have to launch QFinder to look that up. After typing in the IP address, just hit Quick Connect, and you, you should now see the summary screen that you've connected. And that's about all you have to do in this part. Lastly, we need to assign this local drive. So right-click on the Start button and select Disk Management. And as soon as it comes up, you'll be prompted to initialize a new drive since it already detected it as a new drive. Click OK, and you'll see the unallocated space that matches the size of the iSCSI target that we created. Right-click on it, create a new simple volume, give it the drive letter that you want, and fill out the file system and volume label that you want, and hit Finish. If all went well, you should now see a new physical drive in your system that only you have access to. Remember, this is no longer treated as a NAS share, but rather a physical drive in this particular system. And so you'll be able to run ins install apps, run games, do whatever it is that you normally do on a local drive. So let's do a quick test to see how this thing performs. The NAS unit I'm using has a storage pool of SATA SSDs. So the expectation that I would like to get is the comparable speed and performance to running an SSD on a local system. I also want to clarify that this is running on across, across a 10 gigabit network. So if you're using a 2.5 gigabit network or a 1 gigabit network, you'll probably sp see speeds that are closer to a spinning hard drive and not an SSD. As you can see from the results, the performance is slightly slower than the, the uh, dedicated SSD, nonetheless very fast, especially on smaller files. And let's not forget that this hard drive lives on a NAS and has built-in redundancy. The creation process is pretty well done at this point, and you can go ahead and start using your new storage. Before summarizing and going through the pros and cons, I've included some bonus sections on making some small changes in the event that you want to modify your configuration. The first item I want to cover is if you get a threshold warning. The default threshold is 80%, so if you get a warning, you can change that warning level by going into the storage section and right click on any any of the pools that's given you the warning. Select manage. Click on action and set the threshold number and pick a new number. In my case I set it to 98 percent but you can use any number that you're comfortable with. Secondly, if you're trying to set up or expand an iSCSI target and you don't have enough available space you can resize the current thick volume to make room. To do that, click on the volume that you want to resize and click on manage. Then click on resize volume and set the new size. Remember that you're making room for the iSCSI target so you have to reduce the volume size. In my case I'm going to reduce it to 750 gigabytes from the one terabyte and that's on my SSD array to make room for the target and then hit apply. Lastly let's quickly cover increasing the space for our iSCSI target. Since I've created more room by reducing another volume, I can now expand the target should I need more space. To do this, go into the iSCSI app, right click on the target that you just created, and select modify. Set the new size and hit apply, and you'll see the new size of the iSCSI target. To make use of it, we go back to the Windows client, go back to the disk management, and we can now see there's another 100 gigs of unallocated space. Right click on the current partition and select extend. Click Next and Next, and we now have the full space available to us again. As I mentioned, this is pretty much a one-way street. You can expand, but iSCSI won't let you shrink. Now that you've seen how this is done and hopefully have a better understanding of the process, let's talk about the pros and cons, the difference between the two, as well as when you should use one over the other. If you own a NAS or storage server, most of the time we typically use shares. Shares are a perfect solution for data, sharing files, backups, movies, archives, and they utilize the OS and file structure of the, of the NAS or server. However, there's a few times when we want to utilize that space that's in our NAS for dedicated storage to a particular client, such as for VMs, games, or applications. A great example of this might be a Steam library or to house VMs and applications as it'll appear to 
the uh, client system as a local drive. In case of iSCSI, the target will not use the OS and file system of your NAS or server, and it will be formatted to whatever file system you're using on your client, such as NTFS on a Windows machine. In my case, I was able to add a 200 gig target drive to a virtual machine that only had 80 gigs allocated to it and give it plenty of space to install and test applications without the need to allocate a large chunk of premium SSD on my host machine. Gaming and gaming libraries are also a great use case as they use tons of storage, but they're not typically bottlenecked by slightly slower storage performance. Let's quickly go over some of the pros and cons and talk about some potential use cases. In terms of NAS shares, they're very easy to set up. They're multi-user by default based on permissions. There's really no special configuration and they can use the entire storage pool without making a whole lot of changes. A large file performance of a NAS shares also can be slightly faster than an iSCSI target. The cons, however, are the performance of small drives can be slower and since it's not viewed as a local drive, but rather as an attached drive or a map drive, it's difficult to use it as storage extension of your client system as it relies on the native OS and file system of the NAS unit itself. A lot of applications won't install on a map drive and need a local drive. Typical use cases for NAS shares are data storage, photos, archiving, backups, and central storage for your home. With iSCSI targets, Small file performance can be greatly improved as it uses block level storage. The targets are treated as a local drive so you can gain the functionality of a local drive and can install applications to it. It provides scalable storage to your system without adding additional hardware simply by expanding the iSCSI target on the NAS. On the negative side, there's a few more steps in the configurations as it's linked directly to a client system. The large file performance can be slightly slower and it's dedicated storage. Once you set a size, you can make it larger, but you can't make it smaller. And you're basically allocating that entire block to the client system. Having a dedicated storage is slightly less storage efficient on the NAS, though it's better on your system. Setting up an iSCSI target is not for everyone, but it does solve a specific problem. It's not meant to be an either or solution, but rather a tool in your arsenal that you can use and possibly take advantage of should you need it. That's about it for today's video. And if you found it useful, please give it a like. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.